Welcome to this edition of Atlanta Live. I'm Ann White, and we're going to be visiting with two very special guests today, guests that you have really benefited from through the years. Please join me in welcoming Ted and Evie Bayer with Movie Guide, and thank you so much for being with us today and for, number one, for having a passion to come in and share and critique the movies that are out today. I can't imagine, you know, how this, you know. How first, i got to say, Evie's my daughter. <laughs> yeah, okay, you know what, I probably do need to say that, but yeah. Any difficulty. Been, I could have had my son sitting here, too. So. Well, that's <laughs> true great. because your family has really yeah. all, mm -hmm. you know, been raised in the business, and that was not a stranger to you either, Ted, because my understanding is your parents were in the television my and movie business. My parents were stars in the movie industry during the golden age. Right, during the my 30s father, and 40s. you know, did a lot of great movies, Crime and Punishment, et cetera, but he also did a Western series, which is very popular, Yeah. and every time I used to go see Ted Turner, he'd say, oh, we played one of your father's old westerns. And the reason he said that is because they didn't have to play residuals because they were all in the 30s. Right. But he won the box office award in 36, and then he was on Broadway for years. And my mother died when I was young, so I was a left-wing commie brat mm -hmm. on the other side of the equation. And... Um, only saved by the grace of God, so that's uh, right. Because you grew up in the film industry. I mean, what would, what was that like as a child growing up? Well, a lot of my time, my father after World War II was on Broadway, right? And my mother did a little bit of Broadway, and I was always ferried around. You know, when he was on Broadway, you were doing, you know, Andy Mame's Showboat. He was singing in Showboat, but he was also doing the morning show on CBS Television right. or ABC. He was also playing in the major soap opera in the afternoon. He was also putting me on Rudy Kazuti and the Howdy Doody Club. Right. And so we were working all the time. And when I wasn't working, you know, I'd go and sit at Nathan's while he was in on the play at Annie Mame. And the guy yeah. at Nathan's would say to me, and I was a little kid, he'd say, why don't you get out of here? You know, you're just sitting here having Coca-Cola. And I'd say, oh, you know, <laughs> I don't have any place to go. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I was a, I was a Broadway uh, brat. and. Uh, and grew up uh, with that attitude. So when yeah. I see some of the uh, presidential candidates who come from New York, I understand their attitude okay. completely because you're dealing <laughs> you with it. 8 million people and you're a little yeah. kid, you know? What do you do with all those people? Exactly. And how do you keep them? So I did a lot of uh, that stuff. And I just thank God that after doing financing five feature films, mm -hmm. uh, that God rescued me and saved me from uh, well, it's a great the despicable place to start. me lifestyle. Well, we, and we've all been there at one point in time in our lives. And um, to talk about that just a little bit, you know, where where did that transition? What was the event or moment in your life where God got a hold of you and began to develop your courageous faith? Well, I, I thought I was doing great. You know, I, I went to Dartmouth, mm -hmm. graduated summa cum laude in did. Cambridge <laughs> and all this great stuff. And and finally, my supplier was a guy named Peter Fonda through my stepbrother and uh, wanted to start a movie company, so mm -hmm. I put together legal work and there were these, my mother died when I was young, but there were these several women who had come to Christ through Billy Graham because he did a big crusade mm -hmm. at Madison Square, Square Garden. It was a right. major event. A lot of people came Thank to Christ. And they just kept Yeah, a lot of people came to Christ. Nagging me and nagging me and finally they gave me a Bible and said, why don't you read it and tell us what's wrong with it? So I started reading Matthew and I said, this is terrible, begats. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is, I can't even read these names. You what had are you a talking King James about? Version, I, you know, right? Because that, that was so popular back then, <laughs> so, right? So eventually they said, read more. In the middle of Matthew, I came to Christ and I started wow. uh, stopping to pray at a little church because I didn't know that you were supposed to do anything else. And they yeah. said, why didn't you come on Sunday? And I said, what do you do on Sunday? And uh, then I, you know, in this country today, 70% right. uh, of the people don't go to church. Mm -hmm. And most of them, according to Barna, don't even know what you do in church. And right. yesterday at the National Religious Broadcasters, the head of it was saying the language that we use, that the church uses, is not the language that the world uses. So, right. Um, so I was completely out of it. I went to an Episcopal cemetery in New York yeah. and studied, <laughs> and they elected me to do The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I said, how can we change the industry? Mm. And when we started, there was one movie with positive Christian content, and now year after year, it's about 55, 60%. And now you're getting amazing? a tidal wave. And we show people how to make money in the industry. Right. We show people how to do better, how to improve their shows, the whole routine. So we don't get a lot of Christians coming to the class. Well, the, well yeah. the Christians, but they're industry people. Yeah. So Universal bought a day of our time, and studio heads will buy a day, and the executive vice president of MGM comes in. So it's a different world. There's like this world outside of Hollywood, and then there's these six major companies that we work with. and. 
take out the Kannada heresy and the Monophysite heresy and the yep. Homoousians are, and help these people to make movies that reach broader audiences. Well, and Hollywood seems to be embracing you know, because Christian we've shown them that you can make more money. Exactly. And you interview a lot of Hollywood mm -hmm. um, celebrities and actors and actresses. Tell me a little bit about that, Evie, because, you know, we want to um, find out more about them. We're fascinated with our actresses and actor actors, but how easy is it to pull that faith out of them? Are they concerned about expressing that? Or are they courageous? Do they seem more courageous about, you know, just talking to you about their faith? Well, you would think, you know, the, the connotation is that they would be against it. Yeah. But really, I found that people are very open to it. And I think if you smile and you make jokes at first or you make right. them feel more comfortable, they're actually really open to it. And so I, I try to get them thinking about faith and mm -hmm. ask them questions about God. And these are big, you know, studio movies. So Warner Brothers, like... Uh, all the studios call us because they want to reach our demographic of the right. Christians. And so um, they they know my father because he's been there for 30 right. years. And so they're calling us and they're saying, you know, can you do this interview? So I'll do it. And I'll, it's an awesome opportunity for me to sit down just like this and talk to them, um, you know, about faith. Mm -hmm. So, Well, and tell us a little bit about behind the scenes. What was it like growing up? you know, with, with all of this going on. And just tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's funny because I did not realize, you know, I guess I was a little jaded because I didn't realize how special it was yeah. until I went away for college. I went to the deep south. I went to Mississippi, so yeah. uh, a small Christian school there. And I realized, you know, what an impact uh, Hollywood is mm -hmm. on um, the whole culture. And I also did a lot of missions trips that mm -hmm. also helped you to realize that you're in China and, you know, they talk about uh, Michael Jackson. They talk about every star they love. Yep. So you really realize the impact that Hollywood has around the world. So It really does, you know, because I've got uh, some folks that I minister to in India. We go once mm -hmm. a year with our ministry. And the missionaries over there and the people over there, you were just saying Michael Jackson, we just sent over, we sent over some care packages for our missionaries. and. We sent them a set of Michael Jackson, the little top hats, the gloves, I'm and the glasses for the kids because the kids are all into Michael Jackson right now. So you're right, it's such an impact. And people really, really want to know. We're fascinated. Her first interview that you did, what was that? She, oh, you were how I'll old? tell you, uh, 10, hilarious. 12? Oh, really? This was, yes. yeah, one of those situations of growing up in it. And so I was actually just driving my dad to his interviews, mm -hmm. and we get there. It's for Princess Diaries. And yep. I'm like 15, uh, like a ninth grader in high school. And I go into the room and my dad's supposed to interview Anne Hathaway. Yeah. And he says, well, you guys are, you know, similar ages. She's, she's ah. actually a little older than me. She's like, so uh -huh. you do it. And I've just watched him do all the interviews. And he sits there. He's very casual, um, mm -hmm. like, you know, you know, talking and warm about it. And... And I had no prep because I've seen him so comfortable. And I'm like, what do I do? So I sit down there and I'm like shaking. I'm so nervous. Yep. So she looks at me. She's like, oh, so you must be really nervous right now. <laughs> and the moment people say that, you obviously get even more nervous right. because you, you know think they're aware. Right. Yeah. And so I ended the interview like really early. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to spend the time with them. And, and I just said, thank you. <laughs> and now <laughs> she did about around. 170. Many interviews last year. Yeah, so last now, year. obviously, you know, years later, I've gotten more comfortable at it. But don't you think it's taken that first step? Yeah. I mean, when God opens that but, door. You know, I think there's a line here that, that everybody out there in the Christian world needs to know. Okay. Hollywood is probably more open and easier to work with than the church. Wow. That's that a very is the, good It point. is the most incredible thing. I come to church events, um, you know, people will come to me and they say, well, God told me to write this script. And I said, have you taken a script writing course? No, God, I downloaded it from God. And I look at it and I say, so God told you to write a bad script? You know, is this a trick that he's playing on you? You don't think you should go to UCLA film school? See, growing up in the industry, right. most of these people have two qualities which you don't notice, talent and humility. Mm -hmm. So I'm on the board of the American Theater of Actors, and at the American Theater of Actors, you got Harvey Cartel and Robert De Niro, and I studied with Strasberg. And every great actor, before he goes on stage, every great musician, every great, you know, whatever athlete, goes out and trains. Right. But the Christian world, we think that it's instant pudding. Right. That suddenly the Holy Spirit gives us instant pudding. Right. And then we look at the script. This is terrible. So I would love to see the same humility that we see in Hollywood in the Christian world. 
You're so right. I mean, that, I mean that this is, is a very, weird statement. Very, no, it's not. It's a, <laughs> it's a powerful statement because if we're not open to growing, I mean, God yeah. doesn't want to just, he doesn't just download like he said. Often he'll give us a gift, but he also wants us to exercise that and wants us to grow it. And that takes time. And he wants us to get out there and be active in seeking support. We're so not you, walking you this watch alone. Evie's interviews on movieguide.org. You get Chris mm -hmm. Helmsworth. You get... Sly Stallone, you know, we go to these Christmas party for the head of Fox and everything. Right. These guys are, are really nice. Yeah. You know, Matt Damon, I saw him first, uh, we were talking about cognitive development theory and media literacy. Yeah. Because his mother taught that. And then we're sitting at a party and he says, oh, I remember we were talking about Piaget. And, you know, how often do you talk about Piaget in the church? <laughs> <laughs> Not very often. What was your most fascinating interview? Or well, at least one of them. I know you've had a lot. Yeah, so um, I would say Hugh Jackman is someone who's extremely kind, genuine, yeah. mm. and he's known actually as a Christian, And um, but when I went into the interview, I didn't know that yet. It wasn't right? out there, and so I sat down, and he, um, I told him that my grandfather had been in the same play that he, he played in, mm -hmm. um, you know, 20 years apart from each other, but so he was asking me questions, and it was wow. kind of a genuine thing, because a lot of times they're there to, you know, do the job and, right. um, you know, uh, be kind, but he was very genuinely kind, so he was a great, a great interview. Yeah, and what do you think, I mean, encourage the, the viewers in sharing their faith, because, you know, we talked about that a little earlier about how we are often, sometimes we're a little mm -hmm. resistant, and I'm sure Hollywood is too, because they're thinking I'm either gonna lose followers or gain followers, but, you know, yeah, I what think is, why is that important? I think it's completely important, and just like I was saying before, if you do it with a smile, mm -hmm. and if you do it um, with a you know a warm, open heart, and kind of giving the story of your faith, then people I think are a lot more. Uh, receptive but you give the story of it. my faith, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot both, of times. Both, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah you know, I, we, I heard this thing recently about the generations of faith. Um, mm -hmm. When one person comes to faith, you know, has a transformation, mm -hmm. and then you know he ultimately leads, you know, his family right. in the next generation and the next generation. So it, that it's definitely a part of my testimony, but. Yep. You have to come to the Movie God Awards. Oh, we absolutely do. You know, and now you host and, and those Movie God And we're taking we're taking less and less press in there. Yep. There were a lot of Christian press that didn't get in that are here at NRB, et cetera. So you have to contact us early. We will absolutely but, do but that. But the place is packed with CNN and all the major press. But people every year, major people come to Christ. Yeah. And you would get a completely different perspective toward the industry than what you get uh, outside of the industry. And I think they... Uh, I think we just have to remember, and we've forgotten that the that the gospel is good news. It is. It is good news. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't realize that I needed good news when mm -hmm. I was living with a lot of people and mm -hmm. doing a lot of drugs and doing, mm -hmm. you know, as a left winger. Bernie Sanders should find out this yeah. story. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But it listening. was good news because all of that was pursuing, you know, something that was chimerical. It was like pursuing yeah. a mirage. And you get close to the mirage, if you take one more drug, you're going to mm -hmm. be, feel happy. Mm -hmm. And you never get to that point. But once I found Jesus, all those answers came. It, it, everything cleared up. Mm -hmm. It was just incredible power of grace. Mm -hmm. If we all realize that, that what good news this is, to break the bonds of all of our addictions and, right. and, and misperceptions and misguided uh, directions in our life is just wonderful. And you have that story. So, yeah, I do. So, I do. You know, this I is, mean, this is great. You know, we've all been through struggles in our life. Isn't it? No matter what success we've had behind those closed doors, you know, we're going to find, and that's really my story is opening up about, you know, everything that was behind the closed doors that I kept away from everybody that knew me from the church. Yeah. You know, I've often said that church should be the safest place for a broken person to go, and so often it's not. And so you understand exactly what I'm saying. Absolutely. We, we had a woman who was presenting one of the awards, and she was, you know, a, a body model, <laughs> et cetera, uh -huh. and an actress. And she came to Christ backstage. She mm -hmm. said, I'm on a lot of drugs. You've got to help me. I'm not making it. I came to Hollywood and my life is crashing. Wow. So when you realize that these are human beings that are crashing mm -hmm. and they need the love of Jesus, that changes your whole perspective. It does. She was talking about Hugh Jackman. I remember when I, long ago when I was doing Russell Crowe, mm -hmm. we come out of the interview and we sit on the floor in the hall of the uh, hotel and he's trying to sell me on his music because he really wanted to be a musician <laughs> right, and right. not an actor and it was terrible music. So, <laughs> we so often Russell, wanted, forgive me for no, this. It's okay, but so often we want to go against God's plan, yeah. you know, or against our gifts and we've got something in our mind we want. Yeah. 
So you interviewed him, and he wanted well, to be a musician. Well, we interview a lot of people. Yeah, you do. Because we reach a lot of people. We reach now about 34 million. So it's a, mm -hmm. and the studios know that. I don't think the Christian world knows that because we're on a lot of secular channels, mm -hmm. the number one station in New York and things. And my son has done a great job of building us. But since the studios know it, they seek Evie out, and she did. How many people were allowed to see Sylvester Stallone? Like 10? Yeah, that was a really funny story, too. Um, to see Sylvester Stallone because he's got a very exclusive mm -hmm. exclusivity to his interviews and his PR person, you know, she actually like vets all the people before they go in. Right. And so um, one of the girls, she was around my age and she, you know, blonde hair, you know, we kind of are similar. And um, she had been told, no, you know, the PR person had looked at all our interviews and they said, no, you can't do it. You're not approved or whatever. And you're not serious enough. And so I was wow. like, wow, like how did I get this? This must have been like a God thing. And I talked to like my friends from PBS who had done it for a while, mm -hmm. done interviews for 30 years or whatever. So it must have been a God opportunity that I got to talk to him. And I, I tried to talk to him about faith and forgiveness. And, and then we saw him so two weeks later at the party. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the main line in Philadelphia. And he said he didn't grow up there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so you you have a mission. I have a quote from you that I thought was just great. He who controls the media controls the culture. Speak to that quote, because I think that's a powerful quote, and I think it's very true. Well, we live in a culture that's lost its way, mm -hmm. and it's confused about what its values are. And the problem is that children are influenced. When I was came to Christ to put myself through cemetery. Which yep. is a joke. I know. Which like, is a I joke. Have, you you know, got to get the joke. I wasn't but sure anyway, if I'm you not said that it, right before. I'm not going to say thought, it again. He did but, say but, that, but right. <laughs> that's good. So I, I was head of the TV department at City University of New York, and we brought 60 professors together to wow. help kids learn how to be media-wise. Mm -hmm. And there have been hundreds of thousands. You know, every film school in the country that can't afford to buy film equipment, like you've got here, mm -hmm. would go out and start a class and, okay, do a study. So yeah. some poor kid would have to do a study on something for his PhD. So there are hundreds of thousands of studies. Only one of those hundreds of thousands of studies says the media doesn't have an influence. It was done by ABC, and nobody believes it because ABC sells ads. Yeah. Nobody's going to buy a $3 million ad if they right. think, well, I can't sell Doritos, but I want to buy the ad. So everything has an influence, has influence in different ways, and you're mm -hmm. selling all the time. Mm -hmm. So we sin, We live in a world, you know, sin would have been the right word, mm -hmm. where we're being attracted by everything else. You know, what an idol is is the thing that, that, that gets all of your attention, right. whether it's your football team or whether it's your you know, alcohol or whatever it mm -hmm. is. And we've set up all these false gods. So we need to break through this. So mm -hmm. the people who control the culture are the people who are making things, not necessarily because they want to be bad. Yeah. Maybe it's just because they want to sell you <laughs> Lipitor or whatever else it happens to be. But we need to be able to perceive often. the good and reject the bad. And also, we need more Christians in the media, but we need mm -hmm. less Hollywood in the Christians. So the word is we need more Christians in Hollywood and less Hollywood in the Christians. And we need to make movies and television programs and your program mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. that tell people that there's good news out there. You don't have to be stuck with the pain and the suffering and the shame. Right. You can break all of that bondage through the power of God's grace. Awesome. Absolutely. Very well said. And you've got magazines. Did you tell me a little bit about these magazines, this annual well, issue of Movie Guide that comes out? Well, we out? used to do... You know, this this contains every movie that came out last year mm -hmm. and all of our award winners. And then we do what you can't see is this detailed economic analysis of the box office. And we look at it through all sorts of 150 criteria. So our analysis is so good that one of the founders of Legendary Pictures, who did yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja, he's made $9 billion at the box office. Yeah. And he uses our analysis to plot his movies. Awesome. So uh, it's it's really very helpful. So we're helping people. We're helping parents choose the good and reject the bad. We don't do thumbs up or thumbs down. We're not telling you not to go or right. to go. Right. We're trying to help people to develop discernment. So we say, this is what's in it. This is the worldview. You've got to decide. Do you have this propensity? What what do you think about it? You be the judge. Yeah, and that's really your mission. I mean, you, you've said that your purpose Right. In this, in Movie Guide, MovieGuide.com, MovieGuide.org. Either work. one, it's both. Yep, that your purpose is to give people discernment when they're choosing movies. Um, I'm going to ask you a question, Evie. Do you have any advice for that wife or husband who they've checked 
checked your movie guide out and they've saw, seen what the movie's about and they've said, you know what, I'm not really comfortable with that. You know, that's not something that I want to do, yet their spouse really wants to go and see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have either of you, but we can start with you, Evie, do you have any good advice for that person who, who gets that information and says, you know, how do I handle that? We always say, um, talk it over mm -hmm. with each other and, you know, do read the review, see the content in there. I think most of the time we actually write down all the curse words. We write down if there's nudity. I mean, really, um, the Christian audience is, is interested in that. They want to know Absolutely. before they go. And also it, it does help us with our report that we do because we found movies with less cursing do better at the box office, less sex, less nudity do better at the box office. Mm -hmm. And we have actually the amount of money it could make. You know, we actually have, out of all the reviews that we do every year, we do about 400 reviews a year. So wow. we're able to take that and find that information. So I would say, you know, talk it over, mm -hmm. you know, kind of get into why, you know, why are you interested in it, you know. Have a I'll, conversation, I'll that's I'll a great answer. It. I'm gonna add another level to this. I was speaking at a church in Colorado Springs after doing Jim Dobson's program. Yes. And one of the girls, little girl, you know, teenager, got up and said, well, you know, my father is very busy. What I advocate is you spend more time with your children. Mm -hmm. There was one study about how do you break the spell of the media on people. Mm -hmm. One, you, help, you don't tell them to turn it off because they become rebellious, but you right. limit it. Right. You tell them get outside, play with them outside, take them fishing, you know, take them to the shopping, whatever it is, if it's a little girl. And she said, well, my father's very busy. He comes home at night and he turns on the news and then he's watching news uh, uh, late at night. And mm -hmm. I said, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she says, I want to be an actress. Wow. And the whole church breaks out laughing because they got it. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be an actress so her father would see her. I'd watch her. Wow. And then she goes on and she says, well, you know, he's got Playboy on his, uh, you know, wow. footstool and stuff. You're setting, even if it doesn't bother you, even if you don't think it's a problem, mm -hmm. what you're watching is telling something very important to your children. Mm -hmm. You're telling them, I don't have time for you because I'm too busy going to something that right. is not good for you. Right. And I'm telling you that this is more attractive to me than you are, which is a terrible thing to tell a child. So I hear Absolutely. every day, every time I go to dinner, I hear somebody who's lost their children to the, to the world, the flesh, and the devil. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to lose our children. Right. Well, and it is a communication, really. What you, what I hear you saying is, yeah, spend more time and have that open dialogue. Talk about the different movies and so forth. And so, movieguide.com, movieguide.org. <laughs> we definitely want you to pick this up. There's also um, hosting the show. So tell our viewers a little bit more about how they can find out more information. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the back behind the scenes, but how can they find out more information? Definitely go to the website. We're print online TV, um, so they can see the segments on TV, but mm -hmm. go to the website. All the information's there, movieguide.org. Okay, behind the scenes. Now, how do you get all of this information? I know you must have just a team of, you know, critics that are working we, we on all of this. We have great people. Yeah. And they're mostly young and uh, like Evie and Robbie and everybody else. <laughs> yeah, you and got they're your passionate. Yeah. And, um, you know, we have offices, uh, affiliates in Germany, in Russia, in India, in mm -hmm. Korea. So and all what do over they the do? world. And we're, we're so excited. Number one, we teach parents and families how to be media wise. Mm -hmm. Number two, we do the analysis of movies. Plato said that every great artist needs a critic. Yep. I just talked this morning and I was showing a clip from John Truby, who's one of the great teachers for mm -hmm. film writing. And he says the biggest problem with first time screenwriters is they don't take criticism. You mm -hmm. said you have to be humble enough to take criticism. Mm -hmm. And so I tell the story about all these people that learn. You've got to, if you go to UCLA graduate school in filmmaking, yep. they're learning. So we teach, we help people to do better. We teach people how to teach their kids to be discerning. Mm -hmm. And we've been tremendously blessed to have Evie and Robbie uh, with me at yeah. the, the ministry and all the young people that are there. It's wonderful. We just bought a new building because somebody was nice of us to, to donate a beautiful building oh. in, in Camarillo, a brand new building. And uh, we've been blessed beyond our wildest dreams. And every day is more of a blessing. Just meeting you is a blessing. Same so here. So this is great. Same here. This Same is great. here. You guys really are making an impact. You're helping us make informed decisions about our movie going and helping and you're encouraging us to, to have that conversation with our husbands, with our children, you know, and with our friends, you know, on what they're watching.
Thanks so much. Thanks for being here. And thank you for being here. Make sure to check out the Movie Guide at movieguide.com, movieguide.org. See you again soon. Hi, I'm Ann White. And I'd like to invite you to read my new book, Seven Steps to Courage, available at sevenstepstocourage.com. I believe it will empower you to make courageous choices. We all need courage, no matter what we're going through. Courage to face something difficult, to face a diagnosis of a disease that we've just been told we have, or to deal with a troubled relationship and have the courage to heal that relationship and to confront the issues that we've been dealing with. My greatest desire is that my courage will inspire you to have courage to face whatever difficult circumstance or trial that you're going through. I really hope you'll go out and purchase this book and be encouraged and inspired to gain the courage you need to make courageous choices.